Hi crafters, this is Paulette. Welcome to my craft room. And today we are going to be making the October name tag. I've been making name tags for several months for card class, just so the ladies and I can get to know each other. This is this month's card tag. And you know, I don't know if everybody else is like me, but I desperately wanted to use Paper Tray Inc.'s favorite number six bag because I got the Mega Halloween Treats die editions with my last order and it has these really cute spider legs. Well, I stayed up late <laughs> the night before card class cutting and cutting and cutting all of these things out. Not only were they not going to fit in the little name badge holders, but I was afraid that the legs were going to get all bent up. And then I did not order the Mega Halloween Treat stamp set, so I don't have a face for this. So I was going to have to come up with a face, and, you know, I've got these foam stamps. I've got some pumpkin face stamps, and nothing was working. Um, the Sizzix die that I used for the pumpkin here, well, one of these faces would have been really cute, but it wouldn't have been a spider face. It would have been okay, but... It wouldn't have been a spider face, so I ended up going ahead and coming up with this. This was my original idea anyway, was one of these pumpkins. There's a tall pumpkin, and there's a wide pumpkin, and then this really cute little spider that is from a cuddlebug die. It's right here, little cuddlebug uh, Halloween confettis, and that's really cute. So I ended up, after I die cut all these and tried to find a face, uh, I ended up going with my original thought. So, these will be saved for another project because Paulette doesn't throw anything away. So, let's get started and I'll show you how to create this little card. So, I start with uh, just some ivory or white card stock and these are cut down to two and a half by three and a quarter. And then I use the corner rounder on them and round up all the corners. So let's do that. When I'm doing these projects, I just really do assembly line. I do all my cutting, all my punching, and then I do all my sponging and stamping, and then layer everything on. So there's that. Now I did just some simple sponging like this, and some simple stamping. I have these really neat grass-like images uh, from a couple of my paper tray ink stamp sets, and we'll be using both of those. One of them is from Garden Variety, and one of them is from the Iconic Images this image right here and this grassy image right here. So first off I'm just going to take some Stampin' Up! Old Olive and I'm going to stamp this grass on my card. And I don't like to waste ink so I'm going to show you my little trick. What I do is this is just a big it's one of those big giant acrylic blocks. I bought several of these when Walmart was clearing them out. And I've got this one wrapped in paper. I usually stamp on a glass cutting pad. I guess you call it a glass cutting pad. It's one of these glass mats. Uh, it just gives me the best stamping surface. The best image that I can get. I'm a really heavy-handed stamper, so that's what works best for me. And I usually stamp on the edge of my glass mat, but it's not in a very good spot for that right now. So I've got this acrylic block, and it's wrapped here with just a piece of scratch paper. So we're going to take our grassy image, and we're just going to ink that up. And I'm going to do my first stamp right here in the middle, just like that. And then 
I'm going to ink the whole image again, but I'm only going to stamp a partial of it lining up my paper over here on the side. Now, because I haven't used the right-hand side, I can now slide this over to the left and get an impression from my Artie Ink stamp. And there I have my grass all the way across the bottom. Now we're going to do some sponging with our Close to Cocoa. And these are all Stampin' Up! inks. And I just did some really sloppy sponging because everything is going to be layered on top of that. See how sloppy that is? And I don't need ink in the center because the pumpkin is going to cover it up. So just really quick and sloppy. Reminiscent of dirt or darkness. So just like that. Now I also did some sponging on my pumpkins. And I decided that this tall pumpkin would be nice and linear since my tags are in that vertical direction. So we're just going to use that pumpkin. And I had one in my stash that is really pretty. And what I did was I stamped him in Dusty Durango and Real Red. So that's what I'm going to do here. And we're going to start out with the Dusty Durango. It's a really nice kind of orangey, burnt orange color. And it's going to be just kind of sloppy as well. Just some really fast because we're going to be layering and stamping and so it doesn't have to be perfect. And that's good, just like that. Now we're ready for our real red. And when I did the real red, because I'm, I'm a stamper by the seat of my pants and I'm always doing this at the last minute, I didn't do as much as is on this pumpkin. I only did the right hand side just for dimension. Just kind of the top, down the side, and across the bottom here. Just like that. So there we go. Cute enough, I think. And now we're going to stamp the face. Now I could... I could die cut some craft foam and use these faces. But you know what? I have a ton of Stampin' Up! rubber. And don't we all from our stamp sets. And so I just went and found one that was from a wood mount set that is still sticky. And so I used my little scissors These are some little scissors. Um, what are they? They're the Paper Studio. They're covered with this non-stick surface, and they're supposed to be non-stick, but they're not that non-stick. Um, I guess because the blades are exposed. Because I still have stuff stick to them, but not as bad as my little, you know, my little sewing scissors. So I used these, and I just cut a very simple face and then just stuck them on with their natural adhesive to a very crude little wood block. I ran out to the shed to see what kind of wood scraps were out there and this is what was available that I didn't have to cut so I just nabbed it and said it's gonna work and so that's what I did. Now we're going to do the face in chocolate chip There you go. Okay, I did use another little stamp from 
one of the paper tray, let's see, it was the Iconic Images, and I used this little stamp right here to do my greenery up here at the top. So let's do that. And when I inked this, I only inked three, three of these leaves, so I omitted one. So let's see if I can show that here. And we better have our, all right, and just quick, this was all quick stamping. And then I took the little leafy the little leafy stamp from the Iconic Images, and I used that on the stem. And I did that in the chocolate chip. So just need it up here on the top. Um, actually, it's on the bottom. I inked the very bottom. And just lined it up and gave a little bit of dimension there. So now we just need to put our card together. So I just used some adhesive on the back, just some two way adhesive, and stick that down. I also stamped some, I have a little $1 stamp that says October 31st, and I stamped it on some scrap paper. This was one and a half inches wide, doesn't really matter how long, just stamp as many as you can and leave some space. And then I used the decorative label punch from Stampin' Up, and you just slide it in here punch. Now I think I got this little tip on Don Griffith's blog. And then you feed it back in there and it makes that lovely little finishes the shape. Just like that. And then I sponge these with some close to cocoa. And put a little two-way adhesive on the back of those as well. And just stuck it right down here. And then die cut the little spiders with the cuddle bug 3x3 three three die. And I just did a little bit of this adhesive on the back of him. And then any that's sticking out, rub it inward here. And then I just made sure the eyes were covered by the pumpkin. So the orange showed through the eyes right here. All right, I got to go. My baby's not very happy. And then we wrote the names in the top. And then they fit inside the name holders. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.